Robomate Plus, India's largest curriculum based study app. Download the app now. Hi kids, now we've seen the paper pattern of your science and technology paper. So let's quickly look at the possible type of questions which will appear in the paper. That's very simple. Let us start with question number 1a. Now we know 1a is a compulsory section, mostly type of objective questions. Now make sure to read your textbook thoroughly to get full marks in this section. Now it's very simple. This question number 1a has 5 questions of 1 mark each. So it will be a total of 5 marks in general. But keep in mind, when you talk about question number 1a, you might have any 5 types of questions which will appear from these possible sample sections which I'm going to tell you about. Your first type will be fill-ups or fill-in-the-blanks. Now keep in mind students, when you learn about fill-ups, go through your objective fill-ups in your textbook very thoroughly. Now apart from that, when you write the answer, do not just write the answer of the fill-up. Make sure that you write the entire sentence, the entire statement along with the correct answer for this type of questions. So apart from fill-ups, the next section is find the odd man out. So how do you answer this? Very simple. Now, these type of questions might have four to five components in the questions. So basically four to five words in it. Now, what you have to do is you have to read these options very carefully and with rational thinking, find who is the odd one out based on the concepts related to those simple words. Now, after you do that, sometimes in these questions, they might appear in the form of pictures also. Observe the picture very carefully and find the concept related to it and then find out who is the odd man out in it. So apart from this, let's go for find out the correlation. Now in these type of questions, you will have two statements given to you and you have to find the relation between both of those statements and simply write the answer in one complete sentence. But the opposite is also possible. You might have to find the difference between two components also. So again, it will have two components, two sentences and both of those components, you have to find the difference between them. And when you find the difference, write the difference of both of those statements in one simple sentence and you'll still get full marks for it. Now your next section is a very easy section, match the following. Now in match the following, you might have around four to five words in a total of the entire columns. Now here it is also possible that one column might have only two options and the other column might have four alternatives. Now what you have to do is think of these alternatives very carefully, find the correct relation and only then complete the match the following. Now let's go for another section, right or wrong, which is basically true or false. Now in this section, do not just write if it's true or false. If the answer is false, make sure to write the reasoning of why the answer is going to be false. And finally, the last section is give the name slash the molecular formula. Now, these type of questions might appear mostly in chemistry. Now, apart from this type of a naming for the question, it might also be asked in a way as what does the figure indicate or even fill in the blanks in the flow chart. So nothing to worry. These are the same type of questions which will appear. So this was all about question number 1A. So now let's go for the next section, question number 1B. Now here, this question is made up of five sub questions, each of one mark. Now keep in mind, out of these five questions, three of these multiple choice questions are for one mark, each based on the practical work. So make sure to go through your practical journal very carefully for this type of questions. Now out of the five, the other two questions, the multiple choice questions will be based on the projects or even on the experiments which are there inside your textbook. So make sure to go through those also questions very, very carefully. So in total, this section is going to be for five marks. Now, apart from this, now let's go on for the next type of question, which are the most scoring, starting with question number two. Now here, question number two, you have to answer five out of seven sub questions over here. Now, each of these questions is for two marks for a total of 10 marks. Now, what are the different types of these seven questions which you will encounter? The first section are obviously solve the numerical problems. Now, in these type of numericals, observe the numericals which you will attempt in your exams might be slightly different in values as those in the textbook. But keep in mind, they will be based on the same concepts which are there in the textbook itself. So the type of questions will remain the same, only the values might slightly differ. That's it. Now another section which you will come across will be write notes or write short notes. Now in these type of questions, make sure to understand the concept it is. And when you understand the concept, then write a short note on the concept. Apart from that, you might also be asked to write a short note on the concept understood from the picture given in the question. So observe the picture, observe the figure very carefully and then write a short note on that. 
Apart from this, we've also got questions like write chemical reactions along with their equations, mostly available in chemistry itself. Now, in these type of question, they will ask you to write a balanced chemical equation. You might also be asked to name a chemical reaction. Sometimes it is also possible you might be given an incomplete or an unbalanced chemical reaction. Now what you have to do is you have to identify that chemical reaction, understand it, balance it, complete it and then explain it very carefully. Now for the next type of questions we have complete the flowchart. These questions are very scoring. Now here you will be given a flowchart with around 4 to 5 blank spaces in it. Now we know that in our entire textbook there are some limited chapters in which there are flowcharts. Make sure to go through the chapters very carefully and complete the flowchart. Now you might also come across write the difference between or distinguish between questions. Now these questions also are very scoring. So make sure when you do that, these questions generally come for two marks. When you study these questions, you also end up completing your simple definitions and one one mark question. So make sure to go for these difference questions very, very well. Now you'll also come across right properties, characteristics, advantages, effects, uses, such type of questions also. Now in these questions, make sure a minimum of four statements are written in your exam paper. Very carefully that is expected from you. Now your next section also has give scientific reasons. Now in these type of questions, it is very necessary to state and explain the scientific reason. Don't just write the concept, explain the concept behind the event or behind the activity which is asked in the question. Now, you'll also come across give examples. Now, this also are very easy questions. Now, here you have to give a minimum of four different examples based on whatever concept it is and make sure to explain it. One good thing about these questions is that you are free to give your own examples from your day to day life, but make sure to explain it very carefully and link it to the concept that you have studied. So, now let's go ahead for question number three. Now, keep in mind question number three has a lot of options in it. Here you've got five out of seven questions to be answered, each for three marks, obviously for a total of 15 marks. So let's look at the different types of these seven questions which you are going to face in your exam. The first type are going to be questions based on given explanation using the given statements. So here what is going to happen is you will be given a simple question and you will have to explain that concept based on around six to seven statements which will be provided to you. So make sure to read the question very carefully, think about the concept and then write the appropriate statements for that. Apart from that, you'll also come across suggest remedies or measures for this simple question. Now here, the question will be based on problems or effects related to your day-to-day -day life. Now how do you tackle this? As soon as you see the simple question over there, think about the chapter, go to the concept and then give the remedy or a measure based on your day-to-day -day life understandings for that. Apart from that, you'll also be asked to give explanations for diagrams. Now here, when you talk about these questions, an unlabeled diagram would be given to you and you will have to label the diagram and explain it. The good thing over here is you do not need to draw the diagram by memory. You will have the diagram in front of you. Make sure to label it very, very carefully, neat and clean and then go for the explanation for it. Let's take the next section, complete the table or chart. Now these are very easy questions. You have a simple incomplete table and you have to simply complete the blank spaces in that table. Now let's talk about here explain with the help of examples. Now here you will have questions which would include an explanation of a process. So take for example in chemistry you have chemical reactions. Now you have to explain that chemical reaction giving appropriate examples for it. Now. In this section, keep in mind, you will also come across numericals. Now, the only difference is in these type of questions, these numericals will be slightly challenging, but nothing to worry. They will still be based on those questions from your textbook itself. Slightly change in values will be seen in the question. So there's nothing to worry this. Now you'll also come across complete the diagram. So here you'll have an incomplete diagram and you'll have to complete it. So here you need a little amount of memory for the diagram. So these can include diagrams like those of an electric circuit, of a food chain, but make sure if an example or an explanation is asked for it, make sure to give the explanation very, very carefully. And apart from this, you'll come across different types of questions also like answer these questions based on figures, right? answers with the explanations. Also, some questions might appear as write the laws write the theory behind the law and also explain it. Now we have gone through these laws very, very, very carefully over and over again throughout the entire year. So make sure to study these laws from all the chapters very, very carefully. Now, the most good and easy questions to attempt in this type of a section is going to be complete the paragraph. 
Now in these paragraph based questions, you will have minimum six blank spaces in the entire paragraph and you will be given seven to eight options to be filled into it. Now make sure read the paragraph carefully and find the appropriate option to be put in the blank space. And that will make sure you get full marks in this section question number three. And for our last question, question number four. Now, this question is a five marks. Now keep in mind, you have to solve only one of the two options which will be given to you. Now let's look at the different types of questions which you will face for these question number four. Now the first type will be draw a figure and give an explanation. Now this is a very straightforward question. All you have to do is understand the question and draw a neat and clean labeled diagram for the concept and make sure to explain it. Now for this type of drawing questions, make sure to take sufficient sharp pencils to the exam. Don't waste time in sharpening a pencil. Take many sharp pencils and as soon as you use one pencil for a particular diagram, keep it aside and take another sharp pencil for another diagram. Now the next question should be a new diagram to be drawn, correcting the given inaccurate one an explanation should be given. So you will be given an inaccurate diagram. Now, the good part about this question is you do not need to memorize an entire diagram. Here, a basic outline of a diagram will be available in front of you. You have to observe it carefully and just correct incorrect parts in the diagram. But make sure to correct it and draw the entire diagram once again very neat and clean. You'll also come across classify things with a detailed explanation. So you will be given a simple component in the question, look at the component, understand what its parts are and then give a detailed explanation. Now when you write the explanation in points, make sure to underline the important words with a pencil. It will help you get better marks in your exam. Now you will also come across read the given paragraph and answer questions based on it. Now in this section you should know that a maximum of five sub questions would be asked but based on high order thinking skills or hots of the student's ability. Now the last part you should also know that complete and a given incomplete chart and also give an explanation for that. Now here you will have a simple chart in front of you with approximately three to four columns. Now what you have to do is you have to complete those columns and make sure to explain if it is asked to explain in the question. Now you'll also come across questions which say answer the questions in detail. Now in these detailed answered questions, keep in mind, you will be asked for an activity for proving a law or a property. You might be also asked to give an experiment to verify a statement. Now make sure in these five mark questions, there always is a diagram related to this question. So make sure to put the diagram in the question in your answer paper and then you will be ensured that you will get complete five marks for your answer. And finally, you will also come across make a concept diagram based on a component and give an explanation. So you'll be given a component in front of you. You have to make a basic concept diagram and explain that. So do you see these are the different types of questions you will encounter this year in your paper. So make sure you go through your paper very carefully and prepare based on these things which have been said. So all the best for your preparation. Thank you for watching this video lecture. To watch more such interesting videos, attempt tests and to get instant analysis, download the RoboBait Plus app now.